Hey y'all, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel for what is going to be another what's new at the drugstore. I uploaded one of these last week. I will link to it or put like click the I up here if you want to see any of the videos that I talk about in this video. You can give it a watch by clicking the I or checking the description box below. But in that video I gave fair warning that we all know a lot of stuff is launching in the drugstore and so I needed to break these videos up in part because there's so much and in part because it's taking me a while. If you are unfamiliar with how I like to do my hauls I not only like to tell you what I got but I also will would like to have tried them a little bit to be able to give you a mini review if not a full-fledged review so it's taken me a while to process all that stuff which is another reason why I've broken these up so you can give that a watch by clicking the eye or click the link in the description below so this is part two of the installment but it doesn't include any of the elf new elf stuff that I have to talk about so there might be a part three odds are good. So with that said, I think we need to jump in since we have a lot to get through again in this video. First, let's start with a foundation, kind of, I guess, in the way that I applied my face today. Lots of new Wet n Wild stuff is out. I ordered part of them online. I didn't, didn't dawn on me that they had the stuff available online, but it's probably the most reliable place to find the new Wet n Wild stuff since their end caps and their displays, just like any new drugstore display, can take a while to roll out across all drugstores. So I went straight to the source and ordered a bunch of stuff up online then I did eventually later find a display and purchase some more there too but just a, a hot tip I got ordered this online and so I kind of took a risk in terms of shade matching I got buff bisque 366c and I'm pretty pleased to say that it's it's a pretty decent match I'm also pretty pleased with the shade range here. Mine is probably sixth from the fairest, and there are probably 12 to 13 other shades deeper than mine. So a nice broad shade range, $5.99, so basically six bucks for this guy. And oh, for one fluid ounce, so standard-ish foundation sizing. And it basically says goodbye photo flashback on the back, helps eliminate white particle reflection, and it promises on the webpage anyway to give you second skin like like your skin but better. We've all heard of that your lips but better shade. This is like your skin but better. I would say after having worn it a few times, it's a pretty thin light texture, especially I thought it was kind of nice to have it to compare. I talked about the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover, their new foundation in the past haul. So it was nice to have these to compare against because by comparison, the Wet n Wild is so much thinner. Not so much that it like runs down your hand, but as you can see here, there's like this little paddle um, dispenser and it's it's pretty thin. It's not like the L'Oreal which is more like a whipped texture. This has some movement to it. As a result it really thins out pretty quickly as you apply it over your face. I found it was pretty buildable but I do absolutely need a setting powder on especially my oilier or yeah my oily t-zone because I have combo skin. Need a setting powder there because as I begin to layer it up I definitely notice when it moves throughout the day because I'm either touching my face or you know just stuff happens and you can tell when your foundation moves because you see like little almost like ripple marks just basically anywhere it gets displaced from pressure being applied I notice that far more quickly with the wet and wild if I don't set it with a powder so setting is an absolute must because of that thin texture but I do think that thin texture helps it be super buildable and yet maintain that very natural looking coverage I would say it's a dewier finish on my combo skin. It might sink in a little bit more to drier skin tones, so it might give you that second skin look, but not appear as dewy. The wear time was awesome on me. I was a little surprised. I thought for a quick second that because of the texture and because of the way it's kind of dewy on my skin, that it would just melt down on me in the middle of the day and I'd come home with just like a face in shambles, but I'm really pleased to say it didn't do that. It lasted really nicely on me without breaking up, even in my T-zone. Even when I didn't set it in my T-zone is the thing. I didn't build it up, so I didn't feel the need to set it, and even when I didn't, it, the consistency still lasted for me. So really happy with that, and ultimately I would recommend it to anyone who wants a very natural looking foundation, but doesn't have a whole lot of discoloration to cancel out. Unless you're planning on using a color corrector underneath, you can see I have a couple spots. I'm acne prone so I have some breakouts around my face and you can definitely see in the before and after it evens out any discoloration like very very minor discoloration down the center of my face but it certainly is no match for those blemishes I have to go in with additional concealer even color correcting to make sure those are completely covered so buildable I would say to a medium finish but still gives a very very natural finish to the skin then next up is concealer wet n wild has two new concealers out the first let's go with this one first 
it's the Photofocus Concealer, so it goes with that foundation. This is more of a traditional liquid style concealer, has a doe foot applicator. Mine is in the shade Light Slash Medium, and this is what I use in my under eye area. I say that because after trying the other one in my under eye area, I found it is best for all over the face. So this is definitely a brightening under eye concealer for me. It has a slightly thicker texture than the foundation, which I think helps it provide a little bit more coverage, which I think is why you would reach for that concealer is because you're looking for a little bit more coverage in the under eye area. It still doesn't completely cancel out any dark circles I might have, need a color corrector for that, but it definitely gets to work at evening out my skin tone a little bit more and it doesn't crease. You know, like I said, it's a thicker texture, but it's not so thick that it's going to cake up and find lines or crease throughout the day. But I also wouldn't say it's like the mother of all full coverage concealers. It's like a nice natural medium coverage that's slightly buildable and just looks very natural. Then there is a stick concealer. This is the Mega Glow Makeup Stick, and it says conceal. Mine is in the shade You're a Natural, and I was a little bit confused as to how to use this. This is one of a couple of stick products they've launched. The rest is primarily for the rest of the face, like contour, blush, highlight, things like that. And so I saw this conceal and wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but after using it in my under eye area, I think you'll be able to see it didn't, it's not the right texture for the under eye. It's a little thick. It kind of sunk into my fine lines. It stays dewy. I think it's best served on the rest of your face, for me personally anyway. I did not like how it accentuated the texture in my under eye area, and I don't think I have a whole lot of texture to accentuate, and yet it managed to do that. So definitely have to set it. It's it's a little bit dewier, a little bit greasier, honestly, is the word I would use to describe this texture. As a result, it's super easy and fast to work into the skin, but I definitely have to set it. That being said, I do feel like it's a little bit easier to build up coverage around the rest of your, as you're using this across the rest of your face as compared to using the Photofocus Concealer. There's just something about this consistency that makes it easier to pile the pigment on, whereas this liquid really wants to spread and sink into your skin naturally. So interesting that they came out with two concealers, but to, for me and my skin type, they definitely have distinctly different uses across my face. Speaking of the remainder of stick products I picked up, this is them, first of which is the Contour, which is actually paired with the concealer, oddly enough, online. The contour shade I picked up was Oaks on You, and it's a pretty good match. The consist Fortunately, the consistency of both the contour and the blushes is not as greasy as the concealer shade, and so it glides on but really dries down to a powdery finish, and I didn't notice it. I used it over the new Wet n Wild foundation, and I didn't notice it moving my foundation in any way. I applied directly with a stick and then went in with a brush to pat and blend that all in, and I didn't notice it messing with the texture of any of my base underneath. So really pleased with that. There is also a new highlighter stick out that was out of stock when I went to place this order, and I have yet to see it in person, so TBD on that one, but I did pick up two of the three blush sticks that they have, first of which is the deepest. This is Floral Majority, and it's kind of a a mauve pink with brown undertones. It's the most pigmented of the shades that they have, or like the deepest, I suppose. Um, but I wouldn't say it's all that pigmented. It's somewhat buildable, but I don't know that as far as blushes go, this would cater to those with very deep skin tones. Um, because the other two they have, this one is Peach Bums, and the other one is a more pinky shade. And these, honestly, are kind of like tinted highlighters, even for me. I am wearing uh, Peach Bums today, but it just blended right in and it created more of a shimmery finish on my skin than anything so I'm in I wish they would have made a little bit more of a pigmented blush line and then add, added these to like the highlight line or something because they really are more of a shimmer unless you have fair to very fair skin I would think almost done with wet and wild promise it's more face products and yet more highlight and contour lots of new launches that do a lot of the same thing from Wet n Wild, so hopefully I'm able to point out like the distinction between each of them. These really intrigued me though, had to pick them up because they are cushion compact contour and highlighter. Let's first talk about the, and these are actually what I'm wearing today, I kind of have two demos that I've done on two different days so I could show you applying all the products or as many as I could, and so today I am wearing both of these. Let's first talk about the contour, it says featherweight finish, ultra blendable and super convenient, so you open them up and it's the same 
same for each of them where you have your cushion or your um, applicator sponge here and then it is separated by a little plastic divider here into the cushion. This is nice because I think it'll help keep your product from getting dried out and it'll keep your sponge from getting super saturated so when you go to apply it's not like a massive amount of product on your skin. So I do like that they have that but it is kind of clumsy that it's not attached. You can't just flip it open. You kind of have to juggle a couple of components here. That's one downside but it's probably the cheapest cushion compact anything I've seen at the drugstore. So you pay for what you get in terms of packaging. On to how it actually performs. I was, so I applied it with this sponge. At first I thought this is going to be a disaster. It's going to apply things unevenly, but I'm pretty pleased to say that I just used the tip of it here, dabbed it into the product, or actually I used the lid first and then as I ran out there, dabbed it into the product, and then used the tip to start blending it on my skin before then moving in. Oh my god, did I just get that all over my face? <laughs> that's what you get for juggling products. Uh, so yeah, basically dabbed it on and then started using the broader side of the sponge as I continued to blend it out over the rest of my face. And I have to say, I, I really like where this is going. It's a very natural, very thin sort of texture. So you can build it for more pigmentation. But if you don't, it's just a really natural looking way to contour or bronze your skin. It's almost, honestly, it's almost like using a very sheer foundation to run along the perimeter of your face to create a super Super natural looking contour which then kind of begs the question why don't you just use a different colored foundation to do that and you totally can probably would be hard to get a foundation this sheer it really is almost like watercolor makeup but it probably can be done and I was also impressed that for as thin as it was it didn't disturb any of the foundation underneath sometimes with ultra watery products you can you'll water down your already dry foundation and then you'll just start breaking it up and getting patchy and this played really nicely with everything underneath do I like the finish it gave to my skin? Yes. Is it absolutely necessary? No. If you're in the mood for a liquid uh, bronzing or contour product that you don't want to have to worry about it getting too much, too harsh, this is a good one to reach for, but I definitely don't know that I would go in search of it if you already have the contour stick, you already have a favorite powder, or you just, you know, you have your contour figured out. I definitely don't think this is a game changer. Then there is the highlight, which is the same sort of deal. You twist the cap off, there is your sponge, a divider, and then the actual highlight cushion compact. Ooh, if I can pull it off here inside. It's a pink tinted highlighter, but I think it's very minimally pink tinted. It's more so just this beautiful pearlescent shimmer that comes off on the skin and this is definitely something to write home about if you are wanting a very almost wet looking uh, highlighter without being able to see like individual sparkles or shimmer on your face. This is just so, so finely, not milled because it's not a powder, but it's just like such a fine highlight, but so noticeable and ultimately just gives you this really dewy lit from within sort of look, but it lasts and looks dewy all day without making your face actually overly dewy. It too has a similar very sheer thin texture but doesn't disturb the foundation underneath. And last from Wet n Wild, we still got some more stuff, but from Wet n Wild specifically is a new mascara. This is the Lash Renegade Mascara in the shade Brazen Black. Comes in this funky looking tube, very, you know, like, like a geode almost or a diamond or something like that. And it has the ball tip here, uh, plastic or whatever, not fiber bristles, they are plastic bristles. And then with a little ball tip, it's great for getting on the edge of the lashes or running along your lower lash line without making an absolute mess under there. I have mixed feelings on this. The texture of the mascara itself is relatively thin. It doesn't, you know, clump your lashes up. The formula doesn't at least anyway, but I do notice that the ball is so pronounced on this wand that as I'm applying it over here, there this natural dip in the wand creates a natural clump in the lashes. So I find myself having to just go back and forth and back and forth, kind of tedious, trying to even out the spacing between my lashes. On the other hand, I do really like how it lengthens my lashes while still adding volume at the base and the shape that it creates. I wouldn't say it curls a lot, but it definitely adds a little bit of shape to my lashes. The formula holds that shape on my lashes all day. It's not my dream mascara, but it is pretty good for the price. So if you like what this did to my lashes in the before and after, I would recommend it because, you know, it's pretty cheap. And now on to the eye stuff, which would explain the eye look I'm wearing today. Um, most of these are from L'Oreal. They came out with their, their infallible line. I talked about the lip paints in the last haul, these funky colored lip paints. The dive into fun colors did not stop with those. They came out with a ton of fun and funky colors in both their eyeliners. They have some felt tip liquid eyeliners as well as some eyeshadow 
paints basically so first let's talk oh and then I have a new brow product but that's from Maybelline so first let's talk about the eye paints I got two of them one is navy yard this is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes right now on the one end you have a shimmery baby pink shade on the other you have a uh, subtly shimmery like it's definitely not matte but it's subtly shimmery deep navy blue they come with doe foot applicators on either side I applied them directly to my eye and then used a brush to blend them out and I have to say that after the few times using these I, they are not my favorite the other shade that I have is brown I find myself having to go back and forth between shades and layering up because depending on they don't dry super fast so they give you a little bit of time to work but I find if you work with them too early before they've set for a little bit it shears them out too much and so if you're really trying to pack on pigment which I mean I think is why they made them this pigmented you, you have to kind of play the waiting game and I just I'm not sure this is easier or somehow better than a applying a primer and then going in with super bold eyeshadow powder eyeshadow that you have no time to wait you don't have to work you know you just have to build up the color and then call it a day so wasn't super impressed with this I mean ultimately I like the eye look that it gave me and these are two colors that I wouldn't have put together myself a kind of got me out of my comfort zone, but it definitely didn't wow me or like change my makeup life. So then I actually found another display and I thought maybe, you know, this would be good for an eyeshadow base or, but not satisfied with not loving a product didn't sit well with me. So I saw the display again at a different store and grabbed another one because I'm insane. This is a neutral and all matte. Uh, eyeshadow paint combo it's in the shade brown sugar and on one end you have a really pretty cool camel sort of shade on the other end you have a super deep milk chocolate not even milk let's say that's dark chocolate that's pretty pretty deep beautiful chocolate shade and I'm not sure if it's the matte finish or what but this was even harder to get to where it didn't like kind of skip as I was trying to blend them in with each other even though they're beautiful shades and they're super pigmented again it was just like I needed to go back and forth between the two and I'm just not sure that if I didn't have two matte powder shadows like this it wouldn't be so much easier to create a look using them the one upside if you if for whatever reason these still appeal to you the one upside I found is that I can wear these without a primer and they last all day crease free, crease free fade free it's a good formula it's just not for me in terms of how I have to work with them and how long it takes me to work with them to get the desired effect. So unfortunately, there has to be a dud at some point, right? These are it for me. But they also have new eyeliners as well. One is Wild Green. It's this gorgeous hunter or forest green. And the other is White Party, which I'm wearing as a liner today. I tend to love a good pigmented liner, like fun, funky shades. I think it's a a safer way to play with color in your everyday makeup if you're wearing a neutral eye and then you know your liner is the pop of color. So I was really happy to see these because there aren't a whole lot of fun funky shades in the drugstore. These are felt tip, a pretty long felt tip as well, but unlike a lot of felt tips I tend to steer away from them because I wouldn't say I have sensitive eyelids but I do think it's hard to get cheap felt tips to get to be soft. Uh, but pretty pleased to say that these are very soft, they're very cushy across the eyelids. I do find that as I you'll see in the demo here as I'm applying the white especially I tend to press across my lid because that t deposits more product and builds up the pigment a little bit faster but that's really only something you'll need to do with the lighter shades especially white where I'm wearing a super pigmented you know eye look underneath and so naturally it's going to take a little bit more building up here the green is very opaque and pigmented I didn't notice having to go over it multiple times maybe you know on the inner corner or like over on the lid where it's harder to get a full like firm press but for the most part, this was entirely pigmented all throughout application. For wear time, it dries down quickly to a matte finish. It doesn't like shrink when it dries. Sometimes I've had liners that kind of bunch up and so it makes my eyelid look wrinkly and that these don't do that at all. They're very flattering and comfortable on the eyelid and overall last really until I had to take them off. Very long lasting formula as well. So I love that. Overall, if you're looking for a fun uh, liner from the drugstore, L'Oreal has a brand new line that you're sure to find a shade in. Like there's so many fun shades here. And last are brows. Maybelline has a new brow product out. It's called the Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. And mine is in the shade Deep Brown. If I layer it, if I'm a too heavy handed with it, it's a little too deep for me. My mom has the medium brown or light brown shade. Basically the shade below this, it's probably a closer match for me. But it's a shade lighter than my natural brows, so I air it on the side of deeper just in case. I don't know, personal preference. Anywho, pick this up. It has this really 
interesting looking wand. It's plastic with um, bristles or teeth only on a comb, I suppose, maybe a less scary word, comb on one side of it. And you can definitely see there are false fibers in this guy. It is meant to not only shape and set your brow hairs, but also build the volume of your brows with those fibers. I had previously tried the what was it called? It's the Sculpting Brow Mascara. Basically, it was a brow mas tinted brow mascara, but with that horrendous little ball at the end of the wand that I was, I mean, it's huge, huge ball that was like wider than mine and probably a lot of other people's brows. Like I never understood why they did it, but after I cut the ball tip off, loved the mascara or the brow mascara itself because it tinted my brows, it set them into place all day, and it literally didn't budge until I wanted to take it off at the end of the day. But I used that up, and so was looking for something else to fill its place and this is it. This is the new replacement, only I love this more because not only does it have a similar base that tints the tints the brow hair and then keeps my the shape of my brow hairs in place all day, but it has those fibers that builds on top of them. So I find I don't need to fill my brows. It's not a two-step process anymore, whereas some days I would fill with a pencil and then go in with a brow mascara. This is a two-in-one for me. So love it for that, but I will say that if you have more sparse brows and you need to build your shape up, it's less about getting beefier or more volumized brows, but you actually have to draw outside the lines and kind of create your brow shape, this might not work as well for you because it's only going to grab onto and emphasize existing brow hairs. But keep in mind that it's pure speculation from me. I have the brows that I have and have not used it on anybody else's brows, so just my thoughts after having tried this, but if you have experience that says otherwise, absolutely leave it in the comments below because it helps everyone watching this video. And finally, that is it. That's the last product that I had to talk about. I feel, I think I've actually, I have been sitting down here filming this for an hour. So hopefully the video is not that long, but no matter how long it is, I hope it was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear what new products you're picking up in the comments below, or not just for the brow product, but if you have experience with any of these products that is not at all like mine, you have different thoughts on them, let us know in the comments below because it helps everyone and that's what this channel is all about. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys.